Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, December 13th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. It's Microsoft Patch Tuesday and luckily for December we don't have too many vulnerabilities to worry about here for the holidays. Total of 35 different Microsoft vulnerabilities that are being addressed in this particular update. And then we have in addition to that, five Chromium patches that of course went into Microsoft Edge. Among the patches that are being offered here uh, today, we got uh, four critical patches to affect internet connection sharing and could lead to remote code execution. We have one in the Microsoft Power Platform and the fourth and last one in Windows MS HTML. That's also a remote code execution vulnerability. Wouldn't really consider any of them sort of a must patch no vulnerability, but definitely, you know, as all critical vulnerabilities, get around to them and apply the patches. One of the vulnerabilities, CVE 2023-2588, has already been made public. Now, this is one of those uh, AMD specific uh, speculative execution vulnerabilities, meaning an information leakage vulnerability, not currently being exploited. It's the same family as many of these sort of Spectre, usually called uh, CPU uh, vulnerabilities. The reason a vulnerability like this shows up in Microsoft's Patch Tuesday is that uh, this patch will include updated microcode for affected CPUs. And Microsoft also published a blog post with uh, details regarding the abuse of OAuth applications. OAuth, of course, is a well-respected, even though sometimes complex authentication mechanism that allows you to delegate privileges to an application. This is being abused here in first compromising a particular user's account the old way via password brute forcing or machine in the middle attacks. There are a couple of different scenarios that Microsoft outlines in uh, this respect. And then once the attacker gains access to the user's account, they are then delegating privileges that the user has within Microsoft's ecosystem to a malicious application via OAuth. The interesting part about the use of OAuth is always that basically sort of acts as a valet key where you give an applications, access to some of your permissions. You can be rather fine-grained in some cases as to what permissions you transfer to the application. And it's for an attacker a nice way to get a more persistent access to a user's account because even after a user changes their password, these OAuth authentications are usually staying in place. The attacker makes it also a little bit more difficult for the victim to identify these malicious applications by naming them in such a way that, well, they're looking more legitimate. Some of the tricks being played then is that, for example, in one case that Microsoft uh, shows, there was a user that had access uh, to deploy virtual machines. Well, the attacker then used that privilege in order to act to deploy virtual machines that did crypto coin mining, racking up, uh, I think a couple million worth in compute bills. There are also OAuth applications that uh, gain access uh, to email environments and such for business email compromise. Overall, Microsoft is doing a good job in sort of walking you through a few different ways how they have seen this particular scheme being exploited recently. There are also a number of mitigations that uh, Microsoft suggests here, like, uh, for example, auditing applications and permissions occasionally. That isn't always easy, but definitely something that you should consider or restrict uh, what privileges can be transferred via OAuth. And a few days ago, I mentioned... uh, remote code execution vulnerability that was patched in Apache Struts 2. It affects the file 
upload a feature. Well, uh, we do have a proof of concept exploit now for this vulnerability. Overall exploitation doesn't really look that terribly difficult. I have to admit, I don't completely understand the blog post describing the proof of concept. It's uh, written in Chinese and the automatic translation that uh, I was able to create sort of is a little bit lacking here, but uh, looks like it's basically just sort of a multi-part upload issue here where you are able to upload a JSP file and then execute it via a simple request. So definitely get this particular vulnerability patched. It's probably at this point more important than any kind of Microsoft vulnerability that was patched today. In particular, of course, if your application does take advantage of the Java Struts upload feature. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and thanks again for liking and recommending this podcast and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.